What's going on everybody? So me and Tiger are both very excited. Uh, the Northwoods Performance Lift Kit is here and we're gonna be putting it on this weekend. But the initial uh, take of the Northwood kit is that the quality is very high. Is the offset. I don't know if you remember. Hello, Tiger. Tiger would like to say hello. That went well. Thank you, Tiger. All right, today we're gonna to be installing and reviewing the highly anticipated, highly debated Northwoods Performance Lift Kit. On the forums, a lot of people are really raving uh, about this one. Um, and there's some confusion about how it actually works. Some people say, oh, the spacers aren't big enough to actually lift your car. Well, it doesn't only work by spacers, and we're gonna be covering that today. So just a brief overview of how the kit actually looks. Everything is powder coated blue. It looks amazing. Uh, it comes with a few decals for you. The hardware is all grade eight hardware, which is very high. Um, it's not gonna rust. It's got nylon lock nuts on there. Um, so let's get into the video. The first thing I wanted to do was actually weigh the old springs and the new springs, just to give you an idea of how this works different. So you see the OEM spring weighs five pounds. Now I'm gonna put the Northwood spring on there and you can see that it weighs seven pounds. So two more pounds on the same spring and that's important. So what the Northwoods kit does, it does not increase suspension travel in the rear at all. It just has a stiffer spring so that it increases the ride height all the time. But that stiffer spring does not make the ride rougher. It actually um, just lets you carry more load. So let's go ahead and get the installation. The first thing we're gonna do is take the wheel off, put the, some chocks behind the front wheels and make sure the vehicle's supported on jack stands. Then we will remove the sway bar end link for the rear sway bar. After that, we will remove the two bolts that hold the rear shock in place. Once those are out, you can just remove that mount and swing it out of the way. No need to take the shock mount off uh, completely. Now we're going to move the lower control arm bolt that goes all the way through the vehicle. We're just going to loosen the nut first. Now that that's out, I'm going to put one jack under the lower control arm because there is a lot of pressure on that spring. And as we get that bolt close to being out, I went ahead and decided I was gonna put two jacks underneath the lower control arm because I wasn't sure how violently it would come down. Um, you, you should be okay with just one, but uh, just kind of being safety conscious here. I went ahead and put two jacks there. And I'm showing this real time so you can see what it'll look like when you do it. I'm, as I let the pressure off both jacks, uh, both jacks have um, all the pressure let off of them now and you can see it kind of how quickly it comes down you wouldn't want to be underneath it if you did not have a jack on and you took that bolt out and as it comes free all that's left to do is reach up there and remove the old OEM spring and when you remove the spring, there is two uh, plates on the top and bottom of the spring, two rubber bumper plates, and you want to make sure that you take those off and save them. One of the great things about the Northwoods kit is it comes with highly detailed instructions that are pretty technical that give you all the torque specifications. It pretty much shows you step by step how to do it. It's not a very difficult install and they also have different levels of kits that you can purchase. So depending on what level of kit you purchase, 
it is easier or uh, more difficult. Now there is one thing I want to point out um, with the orientation of the rear spring. As you can see, there's a small gap there at the top of the spring. There is a little bit of uh, kind of camber to the how the spring goes. If you rotate the spring, you want it to where on the top surface, there are no gaps all the way around before you try to push that lower A-arm up. So it should look like that. Now that the spring is where we want it, I'm gonna use a jack, put it on the lower control arm again, and start picking things up. What I wanna do now is get the sway bar end link nut and bushing on. What that'll do is, should one of the jacks come loose or anything like that, the sway bar end link will hold that lower control arm on and in place, and that will prevent um, injury because like I said before, you would not want to be underneath this if it did happen to come off. And I already know that my sway bar end link is toast, otherwise I would have a wrench on the other side holding it in place, but I know I need to replace it. Also, after you get that on, you have the jack on the bottom. You should use a pry bar for this, um, but I was just using what I had handy, which is just a big pair of long needle nose pliers. And that goes to show you, it's not terribly difficult to get this bolt in. You don't wanna force it, uh, you just want enough to get it through. Another important thing to note about this lower control arm bolt is that when you put it in, you can tighten it up, but you do not torque this bolt until after everything is already on the vehicle and it's back sitting on the ground. So when it comes time to actually torque this bolt, it needs to be sitting on the wheels. And the last thing you do is snug up that sway bar end link. As I said before, you should have a wrench holding the other end so you don't ruin the bushing, but mine is already toast and then we'll remount that rear shock. I'm also gonna use a jack again, just to help line up the holes for that rear shock. Now that everything's in place, be sure to torque it to the specifications that are listed in the manual. And there you have it. The rear part of the suspension lift is done. You can see how much higher it raises the vehicle. It raises it about two inches when I first put it in. And over time it settles a little bit and you get about an inch and a half. It's been six months of me riding on this kit and it's still there, it's still about an inch and a half. Um, and the great thing, like I said before, is you don't have to worry about your brake lines. You're not increasing the travel. It's just increasing your ride height and your cargo carrying capability. Now we're going to move on to the front side of the suspension and the first thing we need to do is remove the brake lines and the ABS wiring from the knuckle. With those out of the way, I'm going to put a jack underneath the vehicle and I'm gonna take off the sway bar end link that mounts to the shock. Now I do have a video out about how to remove these if they're stuck. Um, if you Google stuck sway bar end link, it should also come out. Um, and one of the things I recommend you replace and I actually do in this vehicle is the sway bar um, end link. You wanna find one that does not have an Allen wrench on it. You wanna find one that has a nut on the back side. Now you can remove the two big bolts that hold the shock onto the knuckle and you just use the jack to kind of find the spot where they're not in a bind and they should come out pretty easily. After both of those are out, you can lower the bottle jack and just push that whole assembly out of the way. And then we'll go to the top side of the vehicle 
and loosen the three bolts that hold the shock in place. Now I do want to point out here that Northwood sells a kit with the shocks already installed to your struts. So if you're going to get new shocks and struts, you may as well get that one. There are plenty of videos out about how to use a strut compressor, a spring compressor. I'm not going to go over how that works here. You need to do that for yourself, but you do need to understand that there is a little bit of, uh, of danger to that. So, you know, look that up for yourself, decide if you want to do it. And if you have to take it to a shop to get them to, you know, change your springs out on your shocks, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but just look into that for yourself. And, you know, my opinion is if you're going to get new shocks and struts anyways, it's more cost effective to go ahead and get the kit from Northwoods Performance that has them already mounted for you. After that, we can put on the top strut spacer. It just slides right into place and then you want to put the three nuts on. You don't want to tighten any of them until after you get all three on because if you tighten one you won't be able to get them in. After you run them down and get them fairly tight, you can put a crow foot extension at 90 degrees on a torque wrench and you should be able to torque it to spec as listed in the instructions. Now I'm using my shoulder to actually move the torque wrench here. You may want to enlist an extra pair of hands because there is a lot to hold here. Next what we're going to do is put the sway bar end link extension bracket in place. And what this does is if you just had to force the sway bar into the existing hole, it's either going to bend your sway bar if you go uh, off-road hard or just on road, it's gonna make your vehicle ride rougher because there's so much tension you're putting on that sway bar. But by relocating it a little bit higher, it takes some of that pressure off and it makes the vehicle ride a whole lot better. Now we're gonna slide the strut into place and reinstall those three bolts that hold it in on the top. And just as with the rear lower control arm bolt, I don't torque these until after the vehicle's back on the ground and it's kind of settled for a little bit. Then I'm going to put my jack back underneath the knuckle, find the sweet spot so I can get those bolts in. And I missed some of this with my camera, so I'm going to highlight it here with um, three circles. After you get it in, you want to make sure that you torque the two nuts, not the bolt side, but the actual nut side to the knuckle, and then also uh, torque the sway bar end link. Then we're going to put our brake wiring and our ABS back on. And it's really just that simple. That's all it takes to get the Northwoods kit in. As far as installation um, difficulty, the most technical thing about this would be actually changing the springs on your struts. But as I said before, you don't have to do that. It's just better, it's just more cost effective to get the full kit for Northwoods with everything already mounted. You get the rear springs and the rear shocks. Everything that comes in the kit is very high quality and you're not going to pay hardly any more than you would at the store. And in some cases, um, if you're going to, you know, get it at AutoZone and not order it online, you're more than likely going to pay more at AutoZone than you would from Northwoods and you're going to get an amazing kit. So I'm going to do another video that kind of does go over the ride quality, um, get some shots of the suspension in action. But I, I absolutely love this kit. Like I said before, I've had it on my vehicle for well over six months. It rides amazing. Here's a few after shots of the vehicle and just what it looks like. It looks amazing. I love it. It gives you extra clearance for tires. It gives you extra cargo carrying capability, as I said. Um, and just because I know everyone is going to ask, um, the rim and tire setup, those are 18 inch rims with a 35 millimeter offset. They're ATX Ravine. They're made, I think, by American... Uh, racing and then the tire size is not very big at all it's a 235 60 r18 but that's it for today i really hope you enjoyed this video feel free to hit that subscribe button leave me a comment down below if you have any questions hit that like button uh, be, be sure to stay tuned for more content because as i said i will be doing a ride video of this kit and a little bit of it um you know in action as far as ride quality northwoods wins hands down it is an amazing amazing lift kit um, it's a good investment for your vehicle and I highly, highly recommend it. And Tiger's, he's happy. He's hyper. So we're going to go for a walk or something because he's crazy, bud, aren't you? Bye -bye. Say goodbye.